Writing a novel is no easy feat, so if you are embarking on the novel writing process, I want to extend major kudos to you. Finishing that first draft is an absolutely incredible accomplishment that you should be proud of. Part of the reason I think writing a novel is just so difficult is because there's no singular how-to guide or tried and true method or process for writing a novel start to finish. Everyone has their own subjective creative process that you kind of have to just jump into the deep end and figure out for yourself. That's part of the fun of the entire process, but also part of the challenge with it. Along the way, as you are embarking on your novel writing journey, the truth is you are going to make some mistakes, and today's video is all about helping you navigate those. Understand that making a mistake is simply part of the novel writing process, and learning from those mistakes and making your story even stronger is going to make you a much more skilled writer at the end of the day. So today I'm going to outline the top five mistakes that I see first-time novelists make so that you can not only be aware of them, but hopefully go back to your novel draft and see if you can identify and then work through any of these mistakes. These tips are coming from my experience working in the book publishing industry in the editorial department at Big Five Publishing Houses, as well as my experience as an independent developmental book editor. I mostly work with first-time authors, and it is such a special kind of experience to be that editorial partner as you are going on this journey and developing your writing process, so I want to bring all of that advice to you today. If you are currently working on a novel, I recommend subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Every week, I either talk about ways to strengthen your manuscript, like in this video, or I talk about the book publishing industry, especially the traditional publishing process. So if any of that interests you, I'd love to have you around. In the description below, also check out the link to download my free story self-assessment. This is going to help you pinpoint the strengths and weaknesses in your own story, which I know can be really difficult for you as the writer of it. It's also going to sign you up for my newsletter that is launching soon with exclusive tips and resources. So let's dive into the first mistake that I see first-time novelists make, which is having an overcrowded narrative. In short, this is just when the story frankly has too much going on so that it ends up being unfocused and ultimately not engaging the reader. This could mean you have too many different character points of view in your novel, or maybe you have too many secondary storylines or plot lines, or maybe you simply have a really, really large cast of secondary characters that start to take the attention away from the main protagonists. Remember that you only have so much space to explore the story within the confines of the novel, which is typically between 60,000 to 90,000 words. Within that space, you're simply not going to be able to do justice to necessarily all of the characters or all of the plot lines that you want to. And therefore, you have to be really, really strategic and picky with what story you determine you are going to tell in full in this particular installment. So I really challenge you to ask the difficult question, whose story is this and which characters are you going to focus on in this particular novel? Try to identify the main plot line and the main characters and the main point of conflict that the reader is going to follow in this narrative. And then ensure that you prioritize that plot line, those characters, from beginning to end and don't veer off too much. Remember that your novel is going to be much more successful if you deeply immerse the reader in that priority narrative rather than only get them superficially invested in a bunch of different character storylines. I'm not saying that you can't have a multiple storyline novel. I actually have a whole other video on how to balance multiple perspectives in a novel, so I recommend checking that one out if you do have multiple storylines. I'm just saying that there is only so much space for you to tell your story, so you need to make sure that whichever characters, whichever plot lines you are prioritizing, you are able to give them the space that they deserve and the narrative does not become overcrowded and therefore overshadows those narratives. The second mistake that I see first-time novelists make is having unclear character motivations. As the writer, it's often crystal clear to you why your characters are doing what they're doing. After all, you know everything about them. You are in their head. Maybe they're even speaking to you. But remember that these motivations are not always particularly obvious to the reader, and you need to make sure that you bring those through the narrative. 
so that the reader becomes just as aware of the character's motivations as you are. Now, there might be a few situations in which we don't fully understand the character's motivations, such as an antagonist character and it's only revealed at the end why they are pursuing this evil scheme. But when we're talking about your primary characters, the protagonists, we absolutely should understand their motivations. If you are writing in close third person or first person, you can show the reader the character's motivations by getting inside their head, having them reflect on what is going on around them in a given scene, or potentially even showing their thoughts verbatim. That way, the reader will understand the internal thought processes behind their actions. Now, if you are writing an omniscient third person, typically you will convey the character's motivations through their interactions and their dialogue with others, where they will reveal why they are doing something. Of course, they might not always say exactly what is on their mind in dialogue, but that is the closest that you can get in omniscient third person. Remember that if the reader doesn't understand why the protagonists are doing what they're doing, if they don't understand why they care about making this decision or taking this action, it's going to be very difficult for you to get the reader invested in the story and therefore engaged with it all the way through to the end. We need to understand the character's underlying objectives in order to connect with them and then want to see the story through and see if they achieve those objectives. The next mistake that I see first time novelists make is what I'm calling a bait and switch. This happens when you set up those critical first 50 or so pages of the novel to follow a specific character and you establish a point of conflict with this character and the reader gets really hooked in on that and interested to see how that is going to unfold. And then at some point, the novel abruptly switches and actually we no longer follow that character or that narrative or that point of conflict and it transforms into something else. So you've hooked the reader in on this primary point of conflict that we thought was the primary point of conflict all the way through, and then that actually ends up not being an integral part of the story, and most of the story follows something else or someone else entirely. This can happen if, say, you introduce a new POV character, a third, or half of the way through the novel, and then we follow them for the rest of the story and never really revisit that first point of conflict or that first character. Keep in mind that the reader is going to get invested in whatever you present them at the very beginning of the novel, and that is what they are initially going to consider the main narrative. And then, because that's what they got interested in in the first place, they are going to feel a little bit cheated if that's not what the story is actually about for the rest of the novel. So you want to make sure that the first 50 pages are actually representative of the story to come. Make sure that you introduce those primary characters that are going to make up the bulk of the story in those first 50 pages. Now, some writers might say, you know, I need to establish a historical background scene at the beginning of my novel because that then informs, you know, when I flash forward 100 years and the characters are now living in this totally different situation. In cases like that, I really would challenge you to try and bring in the main narrative into the first 50 pages and maybe integrate that background context or whatever you're trying to convey in that first section later in the narrative to avoid this bait and switch tactic because it really is risky and it is possible that once the reader feels like the narrative is veering off course or veering in a direction that they didn't expect, they could put the book down, which is the last thing that you want. I would say in almost all cases, the primary true narrative does need to be in the lead of the novel. The next mistake that I see first time novelists make is underdeveloped character relationships. Just like we need to understand the primary character's motivations and underlying objectives, we need to understand why their relationships look the way that they do. In most cases, your characters, or at least some of your characters, will have some kind of personal history that occurred between them prior to the start of the novel. So it is important to bring the reader up to speed on what has happened in their past, whether they are really, really close or whether they have a fracture in their relationship, we should know what has led up to the present state of their relationship, and therefore we will be able to properly interpret the dynamics that we see in the scenes. For instance, if the protagonist in the present day narrative clearly has a tense relationship with their mother, we should at some point 
understand what has led to that troubled relationship. For instance, maybe you will reveal eventually that the mother cheated on the father and therefore the child now has a bad relationship with their mother because of that incident. Most novels include some kind of troubled relationship, whether it be a parental one like I just outlined or trouble between friends or fights between lovers. So anytime you are conveying characters who are not getting along, make sure that we understand why they have that tension and conflict between them and where each of them are coming from. We should have a good sense of what exactly they don't see eye to eye on because then we're going to understand both of those individual characters in much more depth. And ideally, you would show some kind of growth across the course of the novel, especially if you do have some kind of troubled relationship, which most novels have. That doesn't mean that the characters have to end up reconciling by the end, though of course they can, but it can be just as satisfying for the reader to see the protagonist, for instance, realizing that they're simply never going to have a relationship with their mother, you know, and coming to an internal acceptance of that. What you don't want to do is just leave these tense, unresolved relationships just out without any kind of acknowledgement or resolution by the end, because the reader will be craving that kind of growth trajectory in your character relationships. The last mistake that I see first time novelists make is having a lackluster ending. Your ending should have a strong enough sense of resolution such that the reader doesn't have any lingering questions and does feel like they can see a difference from point A when the novel began to point B now that the novel has ended. How have the characters progressed? Have they changed? Have they transformed? Or haven't they? And if they haven't, what have they learned or what have they realized? There should be some kind of arc such that we are in a different place at the end of the story than we were at the beginning. Remember that establishing resolution at the end of the narrative does not mean that you have to have a happy ending by any means. The reader can get just as much resolution if the character doesn't set out what they had accomplished to or what they had set as their objectives in the beginning. However, we do want to have a sense of how the main character feels about where they are at the end of the novel after the journey that they have undertaken through the course of the narrative. So make sure to clue us in as to how the events of the novel have affected them one way or another, positive or negative. Something else to consider is that the ending should also resolve any secondary points of conflict such as character relationship issues that I mentioned before. If your main character has a really big fight with someone close to them halfway through the novel, and then we never see that character acknowledged again all the way to the end, the reader is likely going to wonder whatever happened to that point of conflict. Did they make up? Did they not? So you wanna make sure you thread all of those points of conflict through to the end and resolve each of them in some way. Again, it doesn't have to be a happy ending, but we need to acknowledge them in some way. I hope these tips help you craft a stronger novel and feel more confident in your storytelling abilities. Let me know in the comments if you're currently working on your first novel. I would love to hear what genre you're writing or what your story is about. If you're looking for some more tips, I have another video where I walk through common mistakes on the first drafts of novels, so I recommend checking that out for more tips. As I mentioned, make sure you hit that link in the description to download my free story self-assessment that's going to help elevate your novel on the next draft. And as always, if you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so I can keep growing this wonderful community. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.